So of course, as an ethical hacker, you're expected to do some session hijacking. So let's talk about that. All of these techniques and methods that we've talked about, you can try. You try to find a session. You can sniff it. You can try to see if a session ID is in a URL or in the body of something or in a cookie. You can see if a session is encrypted. And if the session is encrypted, then use a Trojan or stop. Don't do this because you can't break the encrypted stuff. But you could do monkey in the middle or you could just simply remote control with a Trojan. If you can grab the session ID, that's great. Uh, if you can't, then try to use an automated tool to see if you can hijack the session. See if the session ID itself is encrypted. If not, then um, good. If it is, try to crack the encryption because maybe they're using a weak algorithm. Uh, you can try to use phishing emails to accomplish session fixation. So you get a normal connection with the machine. You gather multiple session IDs. You predict new session IDs. You replay new session IDs. You establish connections when possible. If you can't do it, then brute force to try to get a session ID. And of course, you document everything that you have found. So let's review. In session hijacking, an, an attacker requires the user to first connect and authenticate. Then the attacker takes over the session. A spoofing attack requires an attacker to pretend to be a user or a machine to gain access. Uh, there are a number of application level session hijacking techniques, including sniffing, predicting, man in the middle, man in the browser, cross-site scripting, cross-site request, session replay, and session fixation. And not to mention, there are also a number of network level uh, attacks that we can do. So with that, it is time to get on to Lab 10, Session Hijacking.